All right, all right. The, the the elephants are here. One of them is kind of stuffy, but uh, the the other one the uh, is unstuffed. It is unstuffed. <laughs> I got a I got a pool, and, and somehow I decided that I was gonna get in the pool on on Fourth of July, so I can get some of my use out of it since we had it resurfaced. Youth or use? Use. Oh, okay. So uh, hopped in it, and of course. Got a summer cold, so that was fun. I'm gonna start the day off right. Uh, you guys, you know, could tell in my voice, uh, I'm congested. <clears throat> so, so again, I'm, uh, I, I, I could let Willie carry the show, but he's not here today. He's off, you know, making money, doing that capitalistic thing, and Gabriel is here. So that's right. So, We're gonna make it happen. So I, I risked everything on on, on, on Gabriel being able to, to carry and fill the load. We're gonna make it happen. But uh, we always do. <laughs> but uh, welcome Saturday, July six, Porch Talk Radio. Uh, we're gonna do something you haven't heard all day today. We're gonna give you the other side of the story, the side that you don't get any other way. So I think that's our purpose in life. Uh, to bring you the other side. And bring the truth to your front door. And you pray about it and walk, go from there. And it is not always about politics, but uh, what we talk about, the community and how we make the community better for everybody that lives in it. Mm -hmm. uh, that has no race, no color, and it has no politics. So again, uh, welcome to Porch Talk Radio. Uh, we're going to get this, get this thing started, as they say. Uh, we're going to give you a call-in number. So if you want to call in during the show, be on the air. The call in number is 813 251 9867. 813 251 Now, folks, as y'all call in for the first time, you haven't done it. Think about what your question is. Say your question, and it's okay for you to hang up so we can get your question done and get the next person. All right. For those who want to call me, after this show, sometime during the week, and talk about anything else. What can we call you? My cell phone number is 81312. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who want to email me, the email address for the show is porchtalkradio.com. That's the website. So, for those who want to email me, eddie at porchtalkradio.com. And the reason that's going to be important this week. Because if you have some available student or somebody who has some community hours or something to do, what we're going to start doing is we're going to start making this list for, yeah, yeah that, that's probably Willie right there. Calling you. Yeah. We're going to make this available uh, for the community. We're going to start this network of black businesses and how we start making black millionaires and and black billionaires locally here. So so part of that whole process is going to be, you know, we know we got the Florida Sentinel, we know we got the black pages, you know, we got different other publications of black businesses, but none of those publications has all of the black businesses. So we mm -hmm. want some kind of index that's publicly aware of if you needed a black poodle clipper. You know, somebody who clips dogs, who's black. I mean, you know, because somebody called me and gave me all kind of ideas of, of businesses that's out there that we don't think of. We just assume, you know, black restaurants and, and barbershops and stuff like that, beauty supply. You know, we know those, but there's other businesses that black folks own and have. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, but they do again, everything. They're, 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 they're listed. So we got to do a comprehensive list index of all the black businesses here in Hillsborough County. And we say in Hillsborough County, I mean, you know, if it's Pinellas, if it's somewhere, but you know, we gotta start somewhere. So, so and somebody also told me that, you know, all the black businesses, like they did for the Black Wall Street, those was contiguous black businesses. It was like 36 blocks of black businesses. Well, we don't have that here in Hillsborough mm -hmm, County. Not at all. Now we do have a couple of black communities, you know, but there's a lot of black businesses that's not in a black community. 
So it's important that we seek out and spend our dollars with black folks. Again, I'm not being prejudiced. I'm just mm. being realistic. Take I'm care of your own. I'm doing what the, what, what, what the Asians do. If you go to an Asian restaurant, look around. Most of those people who are carrying the food and preparing the food are working there are Asian. You know, you, you go to the Jewish community, you know, the Jews spend their money with each other mm -hmm. first and, and repeatedly, long before they They're community-minded, community of their own people. So, so In community, you know, I would say. Black, black folks have been taught to distrust each other, uh, not care about each other. And I'm going to tell you, it's a fact that black folks are difficult to do business with. I, I'm putting it all out there. Knowing that up front is still an opportunity for us to make a difference within our community by doing business with each other first. I mean, if it's something the black folks don't do, then they don't do it, you know. But there's plenty of things that we do do, especially in construction. And, and I'm an architect, so uh, if you need architectural services, uh, you know, use that, that cell phone number, uh, 230-3312. You know, that's my cell phone number. So I do I do architectural. I, I do consulting. I do building consulting. So, so, again, there's a lot of things that I do, but I'm not using this program to get me work personally. Mm -hmm. I'm using this program to help further this community by, by having you share and do business with each other. Uh, and that's, that's that's part of the process, and that's how we make the whole community grow, not just an individual that's within it. the community grow. That's how we make the whole community grow. So so I want to tell you folks about our sponsors, because that's the other way we stay on there. You know, a lot of folks I see, I listen to Saturday morning line up uh, from week to week, and, and we have been here for 141 consecutive straight weeks. I think we missed a couple of weeks there, you know, about a year ago. You know, but for the most part, uh, we, we we've done 141 shows. Even the, the shows that that wasn't that we didn't do a show, we don't count them. So, <laughs> so we may have missed a show or two within that 141 shows, that 141 weeks. But uh, we've been consistently here on TMP serving the community, sharing which, the good news, which is what we do. That's what we're about. So, let's think about this now. Now. The 4th of July came, that was new mayor, Mayor Caster's first big deal. Because she made a big deal, put a name on the boom by the bay. Now, mm -hmm. I did go. Myself, my wife, and my granddaughter went. Now, that's the same team that, that probably have done fireworks together probably for the last 14 years, because when my granddaughter was less than six months old, because her birthday is, is August the 2nd. So she was born August 2nd. That next year, the fourth, that, that next year, the, the, the New Year's Day events, uh, when they did the fireworks, she was there. So she was less than six months old. Oh. And so it's been like a family thing. Uh, we take her to fireworks that we can, even though the New Year's Day fireworks at midnight. You know, this was at 9 o'clock. It was a lot easier because we went by, picked her up, and took her with us. So me, the wife, and the granddaughter did fireworks, uh, boom, by the bay. And it was a good deal. It mm -hmm. was good because we went to a Channel Side. And if you're at Channel Side on the bridge, halfway across the bridge, you can actually see the fireworks from Davis Island, which is one of the other places where they did the fireworks. Mm -hmm. So they did uh, Channel Side. They did Davis Island. Uh, they did... Uh, the uh, amateur works, and did they, they did one other place down the river. So 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 there's four places downtown where you can see fireworks. They all was good. And and and, and Jane, Jane Castor said that there was going to be a big deal this year because it was going to be some kind of name work fireworks. So again, I'm saying it was good. It was a good display of fireworks, uh, even though Bush Garden is supposed to. Up their game, Timber Terrace supposedly up their game. So Timber Terrace was supposed to hear, hear their game. So so again, at the end of the day, everybody supposed to have good fireworks. So I don't know what the deal was. So was it a bigger deal than last year's question? I think it got marketed better. Marketed better. Okay. So so there's a lot more people there, and I must say the construction that's going on downtown. Because they they're doing the USF uh, med school right there at Channel Side. And oh then, yeah. And then they got another big building, huge building across the street from the med school that's going up. So that's at least 
you know, eight, nine, ten story building, you know, mm. and they, they got that much of it up. So, so again, that's all going on downtown Tampa. Tampa's growing. Again, I, and like I tell you guys, they're spending $13 billion in downtown Tampa. And how is the minority black community being involved in that? Well, they're not being involved enough. That's for damn sure. You Why know, is that? That's always the issue. I, you know, I don't know. Shit. I mean, it, don't it, it, work? It, 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 it's because of racism. I'm, I'm going to do like everybody else. You know, it's, it's institutional racism. That's why four, 400 years of oppression. That's that's why black is, folks ain't got no story. I, I'm going to do like everybody else. I'm, 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 I'm gonna take, take the, the easy way I'm out. Take, take the house, you know, because, uh, you know, we started this last week. We started talking about how to make black folks, you know, part of the process. And, and again, it, 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 and I don't use it as a as an anchor, you know, around my neck, and I don't use it as an escape goat, you know, to put everything, demand this, demand that, you know. I, I'm, I'm like this. I'm old school. You ain't got to give me nothing. Open the door, I get it myself. Mm. Just give me the opportunity. So but that, you did that education Jay, to help Jay, yourself out, open those doors easier, Jay, too. James Brown said that, you know. I, 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 I'm not a poet. I'm not waxing poetic here. I'm just saying something that's the truth. And, 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 and there's a lot of folks that's like that. You know, you don't have to give me nothing. It's a lot of black folks out there begging for, begging for crap. I would say, you know, S H I T. But you know, <laughs> you know. But but they they they've been taught that. They've been taught by a system that says, you know, you got to beg for stuff in order to get it. And so they spend a lot of their time begging for stuff as opposed to going to get it. They got careers doing that. What are you talking about? Well, they got people who made done that their whole life. Go to California. And, and, and that's Go all to they Los know. Angeles. That's all they know. So, so what? So what I do is I what I want to do, and, and and I started, and it was on my agenda to talk about this the last part of the show, last week. I've been sideways. <laughs> we, yeah, we were gonna we were gonna talk about the debate, uh, the Democratic debate, and it just got all topsy turvy, and people started calling and. And, and uh, as I said before, anytime you start talking about race on the radio or TV or any kind of show where the public is involved, that's low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. Always. That's easy. People will call in. People people who ain't ever called into a show before, they hear you talking about race, you know, they'll call in. And then somehow they get the nerve to call in and talk about They're not adding you know, anything to black, it. They just black, black, whatever. Yeah. Because they all, everybody got some kind of racial story that they want to tell, oh, some yeah. kind of concept, some kind of idea. Some, somewhere they have not been treated right. Keeping it alive. Now, black folks don't treat you right either. I'm just telling you. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. You walk into a black shop, they don't say something to you. I mean, the, the Korean shop, no, the Asian shop, I'm going to tell you, they follow you around. They, they send somebody to tell you. Mm -hmm. they, they concerned that you're going to steal something. I'm, I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just telling you the truth because you all know that. So so I know you're home shaking your head because you know what I'm talking about. You know, but, but again, at the end of the day, some black person don't do something to you for you, something that you think right in their shop, you won't ever go there again. Mm, you correct. won't ever no, screw go that. there again. You will hold it against them forever. And a lot of times, they may have done something and not know they've done something to you. But again, you won't forget, and you're going to hold it like they related to you, like like they like it's a kid to you. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to forget it, and you ain't going back there, and anybody that talk to you about it, you're going to tell them. And that's not how we build this community and make this community better. Yeah. How we build this community and make this community better is, is we start supporting each other. And we find a way to bridge the gap and do the things, even though, you know, if you go to a person who's a shopkeeper or owner or has a business or something and you take them to the side or you email them or text them, I don't care how you communicate with them, but you got to tell them that they did something and what they did. You just 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 communicate with them. Tell them, you know, straightforward. I don't like you when you handle me. I don't like the way you do business, whatever. And don't do it like you trying to start a fight. Mm, no. that's, that's what we do. Yep. We will do that. We're and, offended. We get we, offended we, too we, easy. We, we real offended. And now I'm going to get stupid. Now I'm going to beat you because, exactly. because, offended. Because, because you did something to me in your shop, in your store. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how we build a black Wall Street. How do, how do we make a business where the whole community becomes prosperous, where, where we help make and generate millions of dollars among ourselves. We don't have to ask white folks to give us nothing. I'm not completely mm -hmm. familiar correct. So I'm not so I don't have a problem with saying white folks and black folks and Hispanics and, and, and Asians and all that kind of stuff and Jews. Because again at the end of the day, people gotta know what you're talking about. And I don't want the line to be blurred. 
oh, he meant this. No, I'm going to tell you what the hell I meant. So <laughs> that's, that, that's, why we got a good, that's why we got a good radio show. So we can say what we need, and that way you ain't got to worry about the lines being all blurred. And uh-huh. We being Keep politi- straight. Being straight. politically correct and all that kind of stuff. So what we want, and I, and I said we are on Post Talk Radio right now, me and Gable, and, 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 and the issue become how do we create wealth within our own community? Now, I've had a couple of conversations through the course of the last week about the city got 26 lots. And I heard somebody on, on uh, Sean's show last week said the same thing. The city got 26 lots. And I don't think they're auctioning the lots off or anything. But what they want, and this is the best I know, so I'm going to explain to you the best I know, so if you know it better, you know something, if I say something wrong, call it a tell me. Come on. They want you to tell them, pick the lot, of the 26 lots, of the two lots, of 10, or how many you're familiar with, come up with a good idea of how to take that lot and make it profitable. Make Put it back on the tax road. Okay. Generate either a home or a business or something and, 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 and tell them what your idea is. So that means you got a good idea. I want to do a shop. I want to do a house. I want to do a multifaceted international business. I mean, whatever it is, and they come up with some plans. Don't just say, okay, this is what I want to do. And you come in there with a napkin and put your proposal on the table or the napkin you did at the diner. I mean, it's got to be better than that. You got to sit down and think about it. Don't we have people, haven't we talked to people already? I know we have in these uh, job fairs and things that can help people set up this kind of stuff. But again, help them with the business plans. But, but again, this is this is not just a business plan. Okay. Uh, again, again, because they got people who do that. They got people who do that professionally. So, But if you take a lot, they got 26 lots. You find the perfect lot for you, the one of the group, I, I know I know we got a call. Let me finish my thought. <laughs> the, the, the one that's perfect for you. After that lot has been properly analyzed, you know, an idea formulated, and then you go to the city, county, state, whoever it is you go to with your idea for that lot, your lot's going to be put into a set in which everybody who wants that lot, everybody who wants those properties, sure. the city council, uh, CRA, are going to make some decisions. So that's how I think they're going to do it, based upon your vision of what you could do with this lot to make it useful, to make it help the community grow. All right, Carla, welcome to Porch Talk Radio on uh, this Saturday afternoon. What say you? Yes, I just want to thank you guys for doing a great show. Uh, you're on point with everything that you're saying. And the gentleman was saying that how do we get more development with black entrepreneurs like they're doing in the downtown market? Uh, the first thing we have to do is that we have to pay attention. We're not listening to what's going on in the market. We're ignoring opportunities. Uh, West Tampa is a key community for black Americans, and no one is doing any type of development. I've spent the last four weeks over there talking with landowners and trying to get a consensus of people to help rebuild our community, and it is extremely difficult. So how do I get someone like yourself as an architect that can come with us to help shape uh, how we can rebuild West Tampa and have more black developers, builders, real estate brokers, uh, landscapers, architects involved in the process. Because right now we have less than 1.01% of involvement in the downtown projects. All right, uh, I'm gonna give you an answer to your question that may not be the answer that everybody wants to hear. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm gonna, and again, I'm a straight shooter. West Tampa for black folks is lost. When the mayor decided that he he would do something that no other mayor had did in the history of, of Tampa, that he was gonna move downtown west of the river. So that means he decided he made a decision that it was open base, open open target for all that property at the city. The county, the state, the school board own they own like a hundred and two hundred some acres of land over there, and they were gonna make that land available to developers, and 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 folks in the black community saw this coming. I I have been talking about it for 10, 15 years myself alone. You know, so twenty years they had a twenty year jump on how to take take the literally take the property from black folks. Uh, who who were not developing it. They they were satisfied with the status quo, and and white folks 
pretty much came in, start buying it block by block, and then tell you what they do it. They, they they come in, they buy a house, and they they buy another house, and they buy another house, and next thing you know, they got mm-hmm. a whole block. And what they do is take down all the houses, take them all down, have a a, a block of, of land, and they put up a complex that's five or six stories high, and their townhouses and apartment complexes, and black folks can't afford to stay in them. That's how they do it. And they make it four hundred thousand dollars to start, mm-hmm. starting at three hundred thousand. They look at the signs. I ain't gotta tell you. I'm t- t- ride down the street. Those those new buildings, those units start at three or four hundred thousand dollars. Well, guess what? Ain't a whole bunch of black folks gonna stay in those buildings at that starting price. So what they do? They take one block, then they take the next block, mm-hmm. and they take okay. the next block. The next thing you know, they got ten blocks. They got ten consecutive blocks. And and now you know black folks do what we do. We complain it. We complain it after the fact. Now, if you want to put your time, energy, effort into something, and, I, and, I, and I'm just throwing it out there now, look at East Tampa. East Tampa, you, they, they haven't targeted yet. They, they still got their sights on West Tampa, so they still pretty much doing like Pac-Man. They're gobbling, gobbling up West Tampa, uh, even though there's forces in place to try to combat it as, as much as they can. But you could, you talk about play, one guy came in from Seattle, Washington with $10 billion dollars. Want to spend most of it in West Tampa? Well, guess what? I don't know a whole bunch of black billionaires who want to be in West Tampa at that price. So that's how they're doing it. They're doing land acquisition. They, they they buy the land because, again, if you don't own the land, you can't tell them what to do with it. Once mm-hmm. they do the land acquisition, then the next thing you know, they start putting up buildings. And as they put up buildings, the buildings generate money. They, 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 they rejuvenate the area. But it's not being rejuvenated for the black folks that they've already removed. They removed those folks to to North Tampa, Suke City, Suke so, City, Suke. You know, a lot of those people went 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 north, and and they're not coming back. So so again, those new people who are there, they're changing the demographics. So that used to be a black neighborhood. It won't be black no more. It used to be black and Hispanic. It won't be black and Hispanic no more because most of those folks who are coming in now are young middle class white folks. Mm. And they think differently than the folks who oh, were, yeah. who were removed, who were removed. So I mean, I mean, we can fight the battle for West Tampa, and I'm gonna tell you the fight. But 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 that battle may have been lost uh, again, uh, maybe because we got in, we started fighting too long after the fact that, that a lot of the, the choice land has already been purchased. I mean, they started land acquisition in, in West Tampa ten years ago, twenty years ago. And we've been seeing it. I mean, the fact that they, that, you know, white folks are probably own most of Main Street right now. That used to be all black venison. You know, but you go down there now, it's either a vacant lot, uh, somebody's already purchased the, purchased the lot, and, and they're doing something with it. So, so and then what re- revitalization is doing is not waiting on black folks. Um, again, you had some mm-hmm. property, you had some territory that was yours. I mean, for, for, for the whole history of Temple, West Temple was pretty much black. East Temple was pretty much black. Well, West Tampa, the mayor said, and this mayor said, you know, without any, you know, frowning or, or facial, you know, recognition software needed, that that downtown was going to move to the west. And it did. As soon as he said, you know, you, you can put some stuff here at the river, the river, the river is money. Any city, town, anywhere you go in the country, you got water like that, you got development like that. Mm. Because folks would pay two or three hundred dollars a square foot to have a office or have a have a restaurant or have something on the water like that. And of course, you know, we we were not doing the economical thing with the with the with, with the square foot. We had we had we had a couple schools there. Those schools will be gone. Those schools will not be on the river by the time they get through redeveloping uh, you know well, the, it's a commercial the, thing the, they're bringing in. The Hills River down. They don't there. have room for schools. So 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 my brother Good, good, good for you to have the thoughts and the ideas and, and the other thing. But at this point, you're fighting a loser. It's like 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 the folks in Ebor City. Ebor City used to be black. Then yeah. it, then, then it became Hispanic, and then it became black and Hispanic. But now you get a vacant lot in Ebor City costs you three, four thousand mm-hmm. dollars a month. You know, just trying to pay the taxes because that's what they do. They justify. You know, they, they, part of the whole process is to get you out of there. So you can't get grandfathered in, uh, and then and then the, they make it so how you can't stay there, and, and without being racist or, or political about it, 
uh, you you can't stay there because the the you property can't afford it. the property next door to you is now worth three hundred thousand dollars, and there and those folks are paying taxes on it, and your property is you worth thirty thousand dollars, and guess what? The city, county, state ain't gonna let that happen, so your taxes gonna go up whether you want them to or not, mm -hmm. and they can only grandfather you in at a certain level, and that's gonna be higher than what you're paying now. So again, it's a process. Uh, next caller, welcome to Porch Talk Radio this Saturday afternoon. What say you? Okay, uh, I thank you for answering my question. We have a group that's bringing uh, a billion dollars to Tampa. Tampa yes. I work with someone like yourself to be able to leverage that capital and try to do something in what Tampa? Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you, and I'm, and I'm saying this, and I'm speaking to you, you know, as, as a potential developer. The, the East Tampa is still black owned. West Tampa primarily has already been shifted. So, so, so right now, you know, and, and, and I'm not going to tell you not to fight. I mean, what you need to do is, is, is have some professional do the work, do the analysis, and determine because there's still some prime property in West Tampa that you can purchase and still make some money off of. But at the end of the day, the, the, the virgin territory is still in East Tampa. All right. Well, thank you very much. We got another caller. Caller, welcome to Porch Talk Radio uh, this Saturday afternoon. What say you? Okay. Uh, yes. The gentleman that just called in. Yes. Um, he can, if he's interested in connecting with people in West Tampa, he should look on the online and look at when they have the CRA meeting for West Tampa. That um, Joe Robinson is the actual chair. So if he's interested, he should um, try to connect with someone like that who has that um, caring for the community and has a historical perspective. So. If that person is listening, that is a person that he should try to reach out to or check out um, the CRA meeting. Um, what you're saying, you know what, um, Mr. Eddie, you are hitting it all the right points, um, but you, we can have an intellectual conversation about racism and yes. systematic systems that are in place. And what you're saying, you know what, about opening the door or you're saying that you'll just walk through or what have what have you. We do have to have that discussion about being self-determinant, but we also have to take on the, those things that are obstacles. And what you spoke about, you said with a uh, straight face, and you said you're not being politically correct. You had, we had a mayor who is in some cases beloved by the African-American community, and then I wasn't aware until you just explained that about how he systematically like, you know, moved downtown west at the expense of the historic um, African American community. Yes, he did, and, and and he knew he was doing that. But but again, the black community put Bob Buckhorn in office. He showed up in churches mm -hmm. for six months. He every every, every black church. I mean, he, he played the game. He, he snookered us. He he did he did what they have been doing for hundreds of years. Okay, he showed up. He kissed babies. He went to the church. Went to the pastors. The pastors told their congregation to support Bob Buckhorn. He got elected and disappeared off the earth from black folks. I mean, literally, <laughs> oh. done nothing. Would not show up in the community, would not come to meetings, did not give a crap. Uh, you know, I mean, pretty much, you know, just wrote us off. And not only did he write us off, he hurt us economically because he he, he, he took all the restriction off, off of West Tampa and made West Tampa a target. And like I said, you got people with billions of dollars showed up saying, okay, I want that, I want that. Yeah, the University of Tampa, you know, University of Tampa, now has expanded their dormitories probably 80 percent look look at all those big old giant dormitories housing students that's going up over there that used to be apartment complexes for black folks i mean black families used to live there i mean they, they've got really historical black neighborhoods have disappeared so again if you look at that now if somebody going to protect you they're going to protect you when somebody said okay open open season on west tampa you, know, you got some white folks all over America looking at the land values and properties and, and potential, and guess what? They showed up with dollars, and and, that, and we get what we get. But did he have, was he the boogeyman, or did he have help? He had to have had help. No, he had the whole community help. He had a whole uh, bunch of black pastors that were helping him do what he was doing. But damaged see, the community and hurt it. What, mm. what they couldn't see is the outcome. And, and I was telling, I've been telling people for ten years that you know West Tampa was a target, and once they. When, when, when somebody called, when you own property in West Tampa, somebody was calling you every other day, I want to buy your land, I want to buy your land, I want to buy your land. They ain't doing that everywhere. They only doing that at certain parts of town. Target. They're targeting. So once, once you get targeted like that, you got people with lots of money, 
And eventually, you know, based upon 400 years of oppression, 14 years of fighting for civil rights, you got Jim Crow. I mean, all that stuff adds up. You you can't, I'm not giving them a pass on the history of how they've treated black folks in this country. I'm not, I'm not giving them a pass on I'm just saying you got to stop complaining about it and, and, and stand, stand your ass up and do something. And part of that whole battle, part of the whole fight is is I'm not just taking this land down. So so, but you can't say, well, give me something so I can help you, you know, help you do what you're doing. No, you gotta you gotta go out there and take it, cause because nobody's gonna give you something to take and prosper with at the cost of their own family. See that that's what we 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 we've not learned. In and this that's country. where the Joe Roberts is coming to play: getting in touch with them, getting contact, find their phone number, ask around the community, go Google it. Get in front of their face, see when those meetings are going well, on, and bring people with you to the meetings that can help us. Well, anybody know Joe? Joe's a fighter, and East Tampa got a got a good good chairman today. CRA too, so they both got CRAs. They both got three million dollars to spend within the community over the last year. And guess what? October the first, they get a new budget. They get a new uh, pot of money, maybe three million, maybe more. But whatever that that money is, that's tax dollars that come from that community that's spent within that community. And as long as the community is willing to stand up and fight and people within the community is willing to stand up and fight and create a place for people to go. I mean, all these new places in West Tampa, these are these are places where people all over Tampa come to spend money. Well, they need a few of those in, in East Tampa too. Mm -hmm. See, because see, what happened is amateur works. You, you got you got the, the new uh, rowing rowing place down down on the riverfront, you know, where people will come and spend money to row boats and, and practice rowing and, and all that kind of stuff. And they got a bunch of dormitories that the University of Tampa are building. A lot of a lot of complexes uh, that, that 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 are in in facing, which means they they are inwardly faced. That means the people park inside, they, they drive in, in with their car, they get out of their car, they go to their apartment and if they don't have to go on the street, they don't. Yeah, I don't blame them. That's a great idea. I mean, you know, and that's what they're doing. So what they're doing is not community-based. It's more based toward developing the, around without the community. And then once the community is go gone, once the black folks are out of there, mm -hmm. once the Hispanic folks are out of there, and then they'll have the community they want. So, again, that, that's what's happening. And, again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that I have to speak common sense, but I'm, I'm speaking common sense. Well, you've been seeing this happen in, how many years, Eddie? In a language that, that hopefully you understand. And, and again, you got to come in, like that brother said, they got a billion dollars. You take that billion dollars, find out the best way to spend that billion dollars in East Tampa. And, and, and again, at the end of the day, money, money, money has no, 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 no friends and has no enemies. Money is money. Money does what it does with or without you. And East Tampa can grow in its own self or it can grow with somebody targeted like they did West Tampa. Because the, 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 the example is there. What happened to West Tampa can happen, can, can happen to East Tampa. It just got to be somebody that decides that they want to do something. And it don't have to be any, any of you black folks. You black folks can decide you want to do something. But see, you want to do it, and you want to talk about it for eight years. And by that time, the white folks will be in, and then you'll be crying about what they did to you, not what you did to help yourself. Well, you've had how many years of watching all this, Eddie, going on now? You've been involved in some of these council meetings, right? Well, well again, part of the whole process is people, you, you got people who know and people understand, then you got people who talk, and then you got people who do. Okay, too often it's the people who talk it, not the people who do it. Mm. And because you you get your share of committee meetings, I know you're off to downtown watching. You're in the middle of it, and sometimes you have a a presence show up, and you get on the radio and say, "Hey, we need some help. We need some people to show up." And you've had some people show up for some of those meetings. Yeah, yeah, but see, the, 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 I'm, I'm gonna be straight, frank, well, frank with you. Guys, you know, at the end of the day, what the airport is doing, the airport is spending five, six billion dollars. You know, and and the leader at the airport is a person who understands the importance of, uh, of integrating, you know, race and, 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 and minority, you know, involvement into everything that they do. But see, a lot of black, a lot, a lot of white businesses, you know, don't give a crap about that. And, mm -hmm. and, if, and if, if the top leadership don't demand that it happen, it's not going to happen. So there you go. <laughs> In a nutshell, you got it. That's it. Go do it. Now let's talk a little bit about before we get before we before I get too far off of it. Let's talk about that debate. They had a debate a couple weeks ago, and I'm and I'm gonna tell you because I actually took a survey. It's like like I was a Democrat. Of course. <laughs> 
But but I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you what the survey questions were. Mm -hmm. The survey because this is what they the, what this say is this is the issues that they want to discuss with the candidates for the debate. So these these were the areas that the Democrats are concerned about. Protecting health care. Action on climate change. Workers' rights. Immigration. Education. Social Security and Medicare. Reproductive rights. Income inequality. Gun violence protection. Student debt. So, for the debates... I guess for the next 18 months. How is that going to affect the black community? For the next 18 months, this is the stuff that the folks that want to be the Democratic presidential candidate is going to be questioned on and what they're going to be concerned about. And again, you know, they say that the black block vote is a big deal. Now, do you consider any of those issues to be issues that, you know, as a black citizen in America, that you're going to put and, and you're going to make a decision about your president, you know, because the, all, all those just a, a affect you so doggone much that, that you got to be jumping up out of your seat, you know, about listening to them debate those issues. I think had some black person, uh, had some black people been involved in the process, they may have got some some debate questions, like like Camilla Harris, like 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 some of those things that these candidates are bringing up and talking about, ain't the questions that they're being asked. They're topics that they have decided. Well, I can get some traction here. Uh, why don't Why not talk about busing? Why not talk about civil rights? Which about because it's a voting year, they've got to get attention. And they've got to say, I am going to be your Messiah. I'm going to fix and heal your land. Just give me the power and the vote, and I will fix everything. Because all these prior politicians, what, Obama was in there for eight years, nothing. It helped the black community. In fact, it got worse. Uh, Biden, who's running for the president's spot, uh, they're not, they've not labeled him an old white racist, which he's just an old Democrat. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But yet, the fact that he's not up to speed, uh, he's losing a lot. In fact, he's down to the, the points right now, a lot. And Bernie's kind of holding in there barely. But uh, So again, back to the beginning of, how are these talking points going to help you and your black community? What's the first one, Eddie? What was the first point you had on there? Protecting health care. Yeah, I thought Obamacare fixed that. Why do we need that anymore? Well, evidently, he didn't fix it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, and I know a whole bunch of folks, oh, oh, Trump is did this and Trump is did that. I'm going to tell you something. At the end of the day, you know, the the whole Obamacare thing, when they take and penalize you because you don't buy something from the federal government. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Oh, that, oh, doesn't, that doesn't apply anymore because the illegals get it for free, remember? Well, uh, th 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 that, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, that whole, makes sense. the whole idea no that in America, the government came up with with a product or service, mm -hmm. and they said, you got to buy it. It's or, mandatory. Or else we're going to punish you. We're going to penalize you. Unless you're illegal, then you get it for free. So, so again. Make I, sense I, of that, folks. So, so, Come so, on now. Y'all smart people. So, so I, I'm just saying. I, I'm saying to this community, all politics is local. All politics is local. So that becomes a distraction, Eddie. These topics... And I don't care whether you're in Pittsburgh or Detroit uh, or L.A., you know, if you're a black community, you know, I'm quite sure some of these 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 folks who make all these millions of dollars to come up with, the, with this stuff could have came up with something if the black vote, and I'm saying if, if it was important to the party. They've given up on the black vote, Eddie. They, no, they got the black vote without having to work for it. That, that's, the, that's the point. But enough black people are going to think about it going, wait a minute, you haven't helped our community, you haven't helped us at all. Well, well, no, Slowly, no, 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 but no, it's no, happening. Don't no, they think, they say, they, they do it like what happened a bunch of years ago when we had a uh, race here and and uh, Kevin White was running against Ken, uh, 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 Ken Anthony and Kevin White's campaign was Ken Anthony is a Republican. That was his whole campaign. 
and a bunch, of, and he won. And, and he won because there was local bias and local consideration, even though Ken Anthony was, was a much better political person for the community. But how did the other guy help that won? For the black community. community. How do you help it? Well, I, again, I, I'm not going. I'm not going to get on that because I know all these people personally. So, so what I'm saying is, politically, the campaign was Ken Anthony is a Republican. Well, well, again, right now you got enough folks in the black community that say, well, Trump is a Republican. Well, no, no matter what Trump do, he can't recover within the community from being a Republican. So, so. But so, what's been done wrong in the black community has been going on for many, many past politicians. But that, but that's not it. It's, Democrat it, it's, and Republican. It's, it's cultural at this point. Ah, it's cultural. Okay, that's, it, that's it, different. It, it, it's, 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 a, it's a concept it's in which people have learned for generation to generation to accept their fate, and part of their fate is begging people and, and having folks give them hands. But that's out the only way the Democrats can stay in power, and they got to keep them down. Well, well, that's that's what they do. They that's do why they don't have all these social programs. They're they, promising what? Free college. They, they do a good job. Of free that. medical. Right. They're, they're promising all this free stuff, but when they're like, well, who's going to pay for that? Well, it's been marketed such that you know black folks actually think we're the ones, uh, we are the primary purveyors of that free stuff, and we're not. I mean, white folks get more more uh, welfare and more all of these federal programs. Far more white folks receive the benefits of it than black folks. But on the other side, they market it and they tell you, oh, you black folks are so lazy. You black folks are always begging this. You, you black folks but are the always wanting want to give you something. That's always crazy. to give you stuff. But at the end of the day, they get more of it than you will ever be able to get because, again, we had 246 years of slavery from 1619 to 1865. I'm just saying that because I, I got these numbers in front of me. So from time to time, I can just shout them out and, and, and refer to them because institutionalized racism is, is alive and well in America today. And what they want you to do is forget about it. I don't want you to forget about it, but what I don't want you to do is linger on it. I don't well, want we you don't want to continue it either. Let, let, let you think that that's why you can't do that because you can do anything you want. You can do anything that you, you, you set your mind to do in this country today. It, all this country promises you is an opportunity. That's all we need, Eddie. That's old school. All we need, because I know growing up through nine foster homes and uh, ending up traveling the world and owning uh, some great businesses, raising a great family, all of them are employed, raising their own kids now. There's a God in heaven, folks. So this past history, well, I was treated this way or I was offended by that. You know what? I, you know, if your grandma didn't tell you, get up, go back at it. You just got to get up and keep at it, folks. Don't give up. That's not an option. All right. Now I think we got a caller. Uh, Who caller, off this caller, time? Caller, whack the porch talk. Oh, we don't have a caller. Okay. That's All great. Right. Let's keep on right. going here. Keep going. All right. Porch talk radio. Uh, you know, we're just trying to get into, we're trying to stay out of the weeds. Uh, trying did to talk about. Our talk. answers? Who was our people Yeah, we, we, did, we, did, we did miss that, didn't we? Okay, well, 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 why don't we, we got going here? Why, we why don't don't we take we, off. We yeah, take off. Yeah, why don't we go back and talk about Todd Jones? Uh, Great Todd, man. Todd Jones, uh, property appraiser. You know, been with us since we started the show. Hillsborough County Republican Executive Committee. Uh, you know, with, Thank with, you, Jim. With, with Jim and, and, and the folks at the 4th of July Parade uh, in Temple Terrace. Did excellent, very good. Had a big old, big old uh, truck, military truck. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, big, go big and stay home. The Republican went big. Awesome. Probably, probably had the biggest float, biggest truck, biggest display in the Temple Terrace Parade. That's uh, awesome. That was, on, that was on the four. You know, print fast. John Desbrow has a call out, you know, all your printing needs. 813-621-9444. John Desbrow, print fast. 813-621-9444. And J.A. Crusher Washing, Residential and Commercial, 813-850-6849. J.A. Pressure Washing, Residential and Commercial, 813-850-6849. And on this day... Oh, my goodness. We <laughs> had to have it. Oh, this day since, since, since we since we since we took this 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 break and took this time, we're gonna slip this right on in. Come on. On July the sixth, eighteen fifty eight, Lady Macbeth Blake is killed. Lady Macbeth Blake. 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 Lady Macbeth Blake.
the shoe manufacturing machine. On this day, July 6, 1885, Louis Pasteur successfully tested his anti-rabies vaccine. The child that was used in the test later became the director of the Pasteur Institute. Mm, survived it. So That's he good. survived. So he survived. <laughs> if he yeah, survived, he gets a job. All right. Also on this date, July 6, 1923, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic was established. So that means uh, the old USSR was born on this date. And how much money we spend to tear that thing down? Yeah, the Cold, wow. the Cold War. All right. Yeah. On this date, July 6, 1945, U.S. President Truman signed an order creating the Medal of Freedom. That means the Medal of Freedom was also born on this day. And last but not least, bringing us to something that's going on and goes on this time of year, every year, and this year has been different because we got a 15-year-old black female from Fort Lauderdale who's currently in Wilmington and actually beat uh, Venus William. But Oh, she's 15 years old, isn't that's, she? That's he right. kicked her tail. 15 years old. Alright, so also on July the 6th, 1957, Althea Gibson won the Wilmington Women's Single Tennis title she was the first black athlete to win the event. So, mm. so we got all that out of the way. So back to back to back to politics. On the previous show, and I know he's probably out of his car by now, you know, they talked about Joe Biden and they talked about Camilla Harris and they talked about the debate and all the stuff that went on. What what those guys do and they got to do the same thing that Trump went. I think Trump had like 16 or 17, 18 guys when they all started. Mm -hmm. And they all was going somewhere. We didn't know where they was going to. They pretty much got there. But we got to sort through the weeds. Right now, half of this stuff is weeds. And these questions that they ask, you know, workers' rights. Okay. What does that mean? Yeah. What the, I mean, workers, we all know what workers, workers' rights mean in the battle against the unions and and how the federal government's gonna gonna be unionized, and and, and, and how the average Joe Smo blue collar worker is getting screwed by the government. Okay, I mean that's what that is. Immigration. Okay, all these folks coming into the country. Education. I mean a lot of these a lot of these are good, and they probably middle class white America. You know may see and and, and may, may 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 make a difference in their life. May. But a lot of lot of the black and minorities in this country. I mean, immigration is a big deal, but immigration is, is not the big deal to to immigrants. You know, to the folks who are here and settled and came in and waited their two years to get to become American citizens and stuff. I mean, that's what those guys see. They see the process as the process. They don't see coming in, sneak across the border, you know, drown trying to cross the Rio Grande, and they have everybody feel sorry for you. You know, they see it. There's a process by which you become American citizen, and they actually want everybody to go through the same process. And people have spent years waiting in lines to get their get their bill, their right. paperwork, paperwork processed. Yeah. And they understand it's a process, but they understand it's worth it. So for all the news you hear on TV that talks about how awful America is, how racist America is, why do we have all these black, wonderful people now that are leaders in our country? We've got anything from Miss Teen USA, this black lady. Yep. Miss Universe, that was picked out as an American. Uh, black lady. So, in other words, folks, it's been, you need to cut the TV off. We even got cut a black, black female that owns a NASCAR team. Come on now, folks. So, again, you need to just <laughs> shut the TV off, go talk to your neighbor, and get involved in your community and make something happen. But, again, back to what do these politicians here need from you? They need your vote. And they know, one particular party right now, well, they know that if they put fear on you, that we're going to bring back plantations if you don't vote for us. They know there's enough silly people out there, they're going to believe it. Well, Joe Biden said they're going to put you back in chain. But, but See, there, and again, this is all about but, electioneers but, and fear tactics, and you're smarter than that, But folks. what Joe Biden didn't tell you, but the person that had you in chain was all Democrats. 
Same thing. No, Joe, no, no. Joe, Eddie, Joe, Eddie, Joe that's not politically correct. See, Joe Biden did. See, you can't go there. See, that's see, not politically see, correct. See, that's the problem. Joe Biden say they will put you back in chain, but the people he's Jim talking Crow about. Jim Crow laws. Who's the Jim Crow laws? Who put they, those? They're all Democrats. Oh, you know, they okay. were Democrats doing slavery. Uh, they were Democrats doing civil rights. Uh, uh, you know, the, the the whole the whole Jim Crow thing was all about Democrats. You know, and how how Democrats were running the country, and how Democrats in the South were fearing fearing black uprising. And, and, and the whole so, Eddie, if that's all true, what you're saying, shouldn't reparations just be something the Democratic Party just pays and be done with it? Now, why did you say that word? That's that. that no, that's, I'm that, just saying, if they're no, the ones that did no, it, shouldn't no. they just pay for it and be done with it? Well, well see, see, there's a difference between doing it and saying it and then they just got to write a check and be done with it. Eddie. But, there's no problem. No, here. That, it's not that simple. It's kind of like what I'm saying, you know, last week about black businesses. Okay, what do it take to be a black business? It's cut and dry. Oh, okay. you and I had this conversation. If fifty-one percent of the ownership of a business is a black person, male or female, then that's a black business. Fifty-one percent, like a mulatto. Fifty-one percent of the business ownership is that black enough now? You know, there's no such thing as black enough. I hear this talk. It, it's what you you're self-defined. Uh, they got black folks that don't think they black. So, oh. so, so that's up okay. to them. That's okay. up to them. Now you go to Mississippi. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm tell you what a black person is. Come on. If you go to Mississippi and you ride down the highway and it's twelve o'clock at night and a cop pulls you over, that cop <laughs> gonna determine whether you black or white right there on the side of the road. <laughs> hey, he ain't going through no 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 history. He's not going through the genetics. He's gonna look at you. If you look black to him, you black because right there to there is what counts. So I'm just saying, take that as a simple test. White America, Black America. If that police in Mississippi at twelve o'clock at night on the side of the road think you black, he gonna treat you like you black. Mm -hmm. so if he think you white, he gonna treat you like you white. I'm and just folks, saying. Back, just uh, real quick, back. And these, it's a difference. Back these <laughs> politicians, folks, is for you to know your people, know who's running, know what their history is. Kamala Harris, we know she was raised in Canada. We know she was out from Jamaica. Her parents are Jamaican and from India. We, but she says if you listen to her, she's done eubonics talk, which I think is insulting. I think it's absolutely insulting to the black people that this woman that, that looks, has, has a black shade to her, but yet she talks eubonics to try and be like the black people. I think that's crap. But, I really do. That's but, awful. But I'm going to tell, tell you about She's black She's playing it to try and get we, votes. We take everybody. See? That, Even that, when they that, make fun of the that, old people? That we, Supposedly? We, we take everybody. We take, we take if, you, if you ain't white, you black. That's a low-life that, that, politician. That's the way it used to be. We, the Hispanics used to live, when I was a kid, Hispanic folks couldn't live in a white neighborhood, they lived in our neighborhood. So so at the end of the day, we that took was your neighbor, we, remember? We, we took care of everybody. All right, we got a call on the line. Uh, getting to hear this last last couple of minutes. Welcome <laughs> to welcome to Porsche Talk Radio. Uh caller, what say you? Hello? Yes. Yes, go ahead. I have a question for you. Um, yes, sir. They're making a big issue out of Kevin Alice where he was going on, getting on one knee, doing the games, all the fellas getting on one knee, but if you really look at the laws and the rules and regulations, the NFL also break, broke the uh, rule too. You don't supposed to put the American flag the way they have the American flag during the game. That's just the law, the way they did do that. So I'm going to so give, give you your secret about America. Somebody is doing wrong. I'm, I'm gonna give you a secret about America. The golden rule: He who has the gold makes the rule. Therefore, he can change it as often as he likes, and he can make it what he wants it to be when he wants to be. That's always been the way. Cause, cause I'm gonna tell you what black folks have discovered the hard way. Soon as you set a goal, soon as you about to get there, the goal moves. Mm -hmm. See, they'll move the goal, they'll change the goal. They'll make the goal something else. Somebody's going to get and, it. And at the end of the day, they, they have all these rules and regulations, but these rules and regulations are to restrict and, and define and refine you and your motions and your movement. So, again, I mean, you, you can't say, you can say, but you bring it to their attention, then they, then, then they have to enforce it. So either they enforce the rules and regulations or they don't. They make the rules and regulations of what they want, and they change them as often as they want them to be changed. Now, I'll say the other side of that, Eddie. After it's all said and done, I think that makes uh, the minority stronger. I mean, yeah, they're held down maybe a little bit longer, slowed down temporarily. We got a caller. But when they win, I think they win big. 
We got a call. Welcome, welcome to Porch Talk Radio, caller. What say you this Saturday afternoon? Hello? Oh, uh, yeah, this is Joe Robinson correcting you about West Tampa. By okay. All, West Tampa ain't all bought out his 18 acres sitting over there by, by Ricks on the River. The city owned, ain't nobody doing nothing with it because the first RFP failed and we're trying to land bank some of it. So it's 18 acres over there, including the old yellow that's and ready to be redeveloped. So it's trying to redevelop and go on, and the CRA, by the committee, trying to get control over it. Second of all, it's black people on a lot of property on Main Street, both sides. I know. Okay? Okay, so everybody over here, I'm okay. on Main Street, on the property, a lot of Italian and Spanish people on property on Main Street, and black folks. Yeah, like yeah Joe, Joe, contact, uh, contact. Joe, 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 is, tell people, tell people how to contact let me, you. Let me say this. The other thing is, West River is a housing authority thing. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so that ain't nobody owned but public agency. So ain't nobody to control that but the public agency. Most of them people are renting. They are rebuilding it back. Walk down the street, you'll see it going on. The only thing is, they talking about making, and I just saw the legal name called the, uh, Bethune High Rise Condominium. Bethune is called Bethune Condominium LLC. I said, what the hell is that? So, so I don't know. Maybe Bethune going to be condominiums. And I, I got to look at that one. Okay, I guess maybe that, they're trying to get people uh, affordable housing to own. Maybe I guess they're going to do condominiums with Bethune High Rise. So we back. That land ain't, ain't been built on. And there's plenty of opportunities for businesses, black, to come over and try to get some of them first level that they're going to have on these buildings on the first floor up and down Main Street. So now all the price, now don't confuse Tampa Amity work and all that. That is not West Tampa. That right. is Tampa Heights. When you cross the river, you in West Tampa, and we're going to let you know we got it going on and everybody over here buying everything. There's still stuff around here. We need your contact information, Joe. Yeah, Joe, go, go, go ahead and tell people how to contact you because we, 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 we run out of time. Huh? Well, they can contact us, contact me at 813-254-0907, or they can come to our meeting the fourth Tuesday of the month at the West Campbell Library at 530. Fourth Tuesday of the month, 530, West Campbell Library, CRA Citizens Advice Committee. Come out and let's see your voice. And Eddie Wright, Eddie, we appreciate what you're saying. And let's get them out there and let's do this thing right. On All the right. Website. God bless you, Joe. Thank you. Next caller, next caller. Come on, let's, let's, let's get them on. Last caller. I want to ask, ask Gabriel, uh, uh, did you? Uh, I have never said the first part you said, and number two, Mr. Obama's record, if you're going to compare it to where we are today, it's night and day difference. There really is no comparison. If we looked at the economy, if we looked at so much more, he's done more for the black community. Uh, he thought he did, but now that we look at Mr. Trump's record, it really is night and day, and there really is no comparison. I hear what you're saying. CNN says the same thing all day long, but they have no proof. Yeah. Well, well, no, ma'am, it's up to you to defend that. Come on, you bring it. Well, we we, we run out of time here, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. I, I, think, I think President Obama did more for the gay community than it did for blacks in America. So 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 with that so with so with that we we're gonna we're gonna, we lead, on the we're gonna lead the show. Uh, God bless you know, America. because I mean he was black but but for us day and night he made he changed the lives of many of a gay American He helped himself and, you know, he's a multi and, 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 and and they are a, a, a block that showed up supported him financially and voted for him. He and, him at, back. And, and at the end of the day I think that's where he most of his attention went. Politics. So, so that being Thanks, said, folks. thank you for listening another week here at Porch Talk Radio. Uh, call in next week uh, if you got anything you want to add. Call me after the show. But until then, you know, great America. Love you. God bless America. Bye-bye.